there are two important things to consider when we're talking about something this big first is there's a bigger picture where it doesn't look quite like that from the big picture you're coming and you're going and the death experience isn't what people think it is and people have pushed so hard against death for so long that every death looks awful to them no matter how uneventful it is to the person that's having it in other words there's that and we know that you're not getting that from us in the way that we would like you to but there is that there's a bigger picture where it looks softer and the other thing is that attraction is attraction and you pick up vibrations from one another even before you learn how to speak then there's the other thing that sometimes people deliberately come wanting a very short experience you have to step back and look at it from the big picture just a little bit it'll make it easier for you to hear what we're saying about this and that is when someone makes a decision to come into this physical experience they're coming for the experience they're coming for the way the life experience affects them sometimes they're coming for the way the life experience will affect others because you're eternal and two years in this life experience is 80 or 90 years in this life experience is but a battering of who you really are and so when you're looking at it from that broad perspective it doesn't look the way it looks from your physical human perspective you might ask why is anyone willing to come into these physical bodies and endure the injustices and the discord of this time and place well you come because you know that the variety will cause you to ask for more and you know the majority of those who are living on the planet at any point in time are not experiencing that thing that you call tragedy it is a small experience and the most important thing that we want to say about it is that no one is being punished by the tragedy and no one has done something wrong and that's why they're living the tragedy even in this conversation where we're talking about the law of attraction and the science of deliberate creation we would never want to imply that someone making their transition in some way did something wrong you're not going to like this analogy at all but we're going to give it to you anyway because it's shockingly ridiculous and therefore may be helpful when Jerry and Esther first moved to San Antonio they got chickens and they loved their chickens they named their chickens they even knew which chicken laid which egg and Jerry built a little ladder for them so they could put themselves to bed at night and the chicken coop had a diving board on it so they could let themselves out in the morning because often Jerry and Esther weren't there so they had to sort of safely tuck themselves away from the raccoons and the possums at night and be able to get out in the morning it was quite ingenious what he invented and one day the neighbor's dog got into the chicken yard and killed some chickens and hurt some others and it was really upsetting to Esther in fact it was the only time she was not able to access us because she was so distraught and finally when she was able to hear us we said focus on the chickens that aren't dead now that sounds really ridiculous we know that sounds like really a cold-hearted thing to say but what are you gonna do what are you gonna do are you gonna hold yourself this is the whole message that we're offering all of the time you live in a variety of circumstances and the more you are able to look at things the way your inner being does then the more you're going to be able to close the gap between the separation that you invoke when you think about things in the way that your inner being doesn't so when you think death is tragic you've got a bone to pick with your inner being who will never see it that way when you think that someone's life is wasted because they were two years old when they made their transition your inner being doesn't agree with that because your inner being knows that this is an eternal being who never ceases to have consciousness who will return into a physical experience if he chooses to do so you get what we're getting at that's why we say the broader perspective is necessary and even then there's no one who has access to our perspective as fully and as frequently as Esther does but Jerry making his transition she sure wasn't ready for that she was never going to be ready for that she was so mad at him for making that his decision she thought 
he should do what she wanted him to do. But from his broader perspective, he knew he could be of greater advantage in the subject of death from that perspective than from this perspective, you see. And while Esther thought it was the end of the world, it sure wasn't. And when she thought it was the end of Jerry, she knew better because she'd heard it. But when she realized that he's everywhere, in fact, he's more present with her than he was when he was in one end of the bus and she was in the other end of the bus, there is no death. 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 And so many people are so worried about themselves dying or somebody else dying that they don't really allow themselves to live. It would be such a wonderful relief if you could get your thoughts around this subject of your eternalness so that when something like that happens, of course you want to continue to romp and play with them in the way that you have been. We are not saying that you were wrong in your emotions. We're just saying, what are you going to do? Everybody you know is going to die and some of them before you're ready. Some of them not soon enough. <laughs> <clears throat> And so, as you sort of start practicing the bigger picture on this subject and this subject, that's a big one. That's a big subject. And sometimes it's forced on you. It was forced on Esther. And it was a hard adaptation, but she really got it. She understands that no one ever goes anywhere. So let us talk to you a little bit about this big picture. So here you all are in your physical bodies and in non-physical is your inner being and all the non-physicals of everyone and especially we want to call your attention to these people that you have known maybe your parents maybe your brothers maybe your children maybe your lovers who have made their transition to the non-physical those who have lived with you in this lifetime are particularly aware of you and still active in your experience rooting for you laughing with you knowing you enjoying you the question is how much of that are you allowing yourself or are you off on this tangent about the injustice or the tragedy of this or that or this or that so you're empathizing with them but you're not being like Jesus when you feel like that you've joined them in their pain so you have nothing for them but if you can reach this place where you know for sure especially if they're detached a bit from you if you know for sure that their loved ones are still aware it's a really interesting time for humans around what you call your celebrations of death and funerals and that sort of thing because there's such a pointed presence of non-physical energy around and anyone who's teetering in the vicinity often receives some of it and so there's extra clarity and strength and resolve and camaraderie and harmony that often happens around those settings it's not because the non-physical energy is stronger at those times it's that it's expected to be stronger by so many humans and so there's more human allowance of it during those times than usual but this subject isn't different from any other subject you can turn on that television and find things of beauty and things of awfulness the fact of it is that every time you choose a perspective that is contrary to the perspective that you you could watch global warming which global warming your planet is in constant state of evolution of course these things are happening but you could watch it from that feeling of tragedy and trauma and get yourself in a real place of distortion and discord or you could be the adaptive being that you are and know that you'll figure out what to do there are all kinds of resources that are coming from non-physical and all kinds of impulses are being inspired you could take any subject and find your inner beings point of view on it or a discordant point of view on it and feel either in alignment or not in alignment and so we just want to say that even on this hardest of all subjects to converse about that you have choices about the way you focus and therefore choices about the way you feel and the bottom line of all of it is is that your inner being has a clear clarity on steroids opinion about everything that you are living that opinion of source and revival and rejuvenation and renewal and life about every 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 subject every stick in the bag 
your inner being knows and so when you feel your emotion in that strong way and you just simply say well I'm sure looking at this in a cattywampus way than what my inner being is and then you say I would like to know it from that point of view because I sure don't like this pain and I sure would like to be of value to the others there is a fine line isn't there between being really joyful about life and really discordant about death and it's really helpful to understand that it's life and life and all life and all life and all life it's all life it's all life there's no ending to any of us ever we just continue to evolve and expand and you all have come into these physical bodies with a very clear intention of having been all of that and to come and then to experience that here in physical form where that can expand into more and more delicious manifestations and what's the point of all of that do you think source needs one more manifestation the point of it is for the joy of the manifestation for the actualization of the clear thoughts and you don't get to understand and apply and then live actualization of clear thoughts unless you've had some unclear thoughts you don't get to live in the joy of your eternalness unless you've suffered in your flawed premise of loss or lack of some of that you see we wouldn't ever try to talk someone out of their sadness because when they're sad they're sad we get that but we would stand in our not sadness knowing the whole story so that if they want to lean in that direction they might find some comfort over there with you where you are so we're just going to make this really strong statement and that is as a parent or a teacher never get between someone you love and what their inner being knows about something never get between them and their true desire the reason that that applies to this conversation is because when you decide that death is an ending you're between every person that you talk to and what they really know when you decide that what humans call physical death is a new beginning it's a new beginning for everyone you talk about a new segment a new segment where someone left the table someone left the table but they didn't leave the party they didn't leave the experience they didn't leave the dialogue in fact they're there for that rich dialogue when you quiet your mind and you reemerge into non-physical that's when you hear them that's when those impulses come you know when you'll really hear them this is a way that you can hear them today and we don't just mean through Esther when a song comes into your mind and you can't figure out any reason that the song came into your mind think about how the song feels or even what the song says because it's somebody talking to you and the song was the path of least resistance way for you to hear what they're saying as much as you like music and as many songs have been written about everything it's a big vocabulary so when someone's got a message for you and you're on the brink but you're not quite letting it in another way birds birds are everywhere and they are such willing messengers and they will fly right in and look you right in the eye and when they do look at them and say who are you and you'll know in the moment that you ask the question who it is that's right there saying to you hey remember me not dead <laughs> <laughs>